Now, Guy and I are, are thirsty for company news. We want to talk about business, but these political stories keep sucking us back in and taking up all of our time. Is that true for you as well? No, I think uh, what we uh, see right now is that between uh, this uh, tug of war, if you want, between economics and politics, uh, probably uh, economics is winning right now over politics and the market are uh, discounting the political risk. Uh, probably they are right to discount to a certain extent the political risk because what we have seen over the past months, whether in the US or in the UK, is that uh, executive power doesn't have all the controls. Uh, obviously, the judiciary power and the parliamentary power uh, can actually hinder, if you want, the, the executive willingness. And I guess uh, making the parallel with France, what people start to realize is that after the presidential election, there is obviously a parliamentary election and that the route and the road for the president, for example, to call a referendum on uh, the uh, euro belongings is, uh, is actually quite a, quite a narrow path to succeed. So that, but that goes for, for everybody as well. I, what you're telling us is that actually whoever wins this in France is unlikely to be able to significantly change the economic trajectory of France. I think that, yeah, what I'm saying is that presidential election, if you want, is not the end game. What comes afterwards is parliamentary election, and that can be a, a very strong mitigating factor, if you want, with regards to any kind of direction that the president wants to take. And by the way, the two candidates which are leading in the poll right now, whether Marine Le Pen or Emmanuel Macron, uh, we know that both of them will actually struggle to build a majority in the parliament. So we might be in a situation where politics is uh, all bark, no bite, if you want, in the sense that the capacity to actually implement a radical agenda is very constrained by um, the nature of the institutions and by the power of the parliament, which is, by the way, not specific to France. I think what we have seen in the US and in the UK over the past months is clearly showing us that uh, it's not as clear-cut as, as what we, we want to believe in. You know, some people, Jean, would ascribe the reflation trend to these populist politicians that are winning, but maybe it's happening despite these populist politicians winning because they don't seem to have executed on any of their, uh, on any of their points yet. Are you be able to take advantage of that reflation undercurrent as we all worry about um, the, the political situation? Uh, I think definitively as an investor, we want to take advantage of this better uh, economic environment and we have been actually positioning our portfolio in order uh, to capture some of uh, the uh, cyclical uh, upswing and some of the uh, reflationary uh, trade that we have been seeing in the market for the past months. But what we want to do is to do it in a very selective way. Uh, we know that uh, not every cyclical company is poised actually to benefit from the current environment. Uh, to give you a clear case in point in the US, it seems to us that airlines are a lot better positioned than automotive uh, with regards to being more domestic, so less vulnerable to any kind of uh, political interferences in terms of border adjustment tax, uh, and also probably a lot less uh, vulnerable to rising rates, unlike the automotive sector, which obviously relies a lot on uh, credit financing. So it's all about capturing what's happening on the economic front, but to do it in a selective way and not just try to buy indiscriminately every, every every stock or every uh, cyclical sectors, if you want.